What do you think? Well, you know what I think. You've, uh, presumably you've seen the movie, and the movie says quite clearly that just, his death was a coup d'etat. A lot of the facts in the case are still not agreed upon because various eyewitnesses differ in their accounts of it. Uh, there's no b question that it is a full-out attack on the Warren Commission because I don't believe it. And I think it was a, a lie. I think it was a lie put over on the American public that Oswald did it alone. We've had 28 years of, of, of bullshit from the, from the government and from the media. Is it really a covert, a shadow government that runs America? Uh, not only did they possibly kill Kennedy, but they killed Robert Kennedy, they killed Martin Luther King. They appointed Alan Dulles uh, to investigate John Kennedy's death. That's like asking the, uh, the, the fox to investigate the chicken coop. It isn't fair. Uh, I've always said that there are two conspiracies. There was a small conspiracy, it could involve five to 10 people, maybe 11, 12, to kill the president. There was a second conspiracy here to cover it up. Europe, South, like America, Europe. South America, South mm America. -hmm. I do when I I like outside of hotel rooms too. <laughs> Oliver Stern, can I start by asking you why you wanted to make JFK? Well, I thought first of all it was a hell of a hell of a thriller. I read the book by Garrison called On the Trail of the Assassins, and it was I said to myself, even if fifty percent, twenty percent of this is true, this is outrageous story. It had never been reviewed in America. You know, it was a totally ignored book. It was underground press. I read it. I, went, I met with Jim in New Orleans, and uh, he struck me immediately as an articulate and dignified man who, would, the, in his late 60s, had returned and written a second book about this case that had haunted his life. Very few people do that when they're in their 60s unless they really firmly believe and uh, have conviction. Uh, secondly, the subject matter itself is, is probably the most important subject matter I've dealt with. It goes to the heart of the American dilemma. You know, it's, the so, it's a battle over the, for the soul of America in a sense because, you know, was Kennedy what his critics say he was, a, an unimportant president, uh, charismatic, but basically a bump on the log that was removed and then Lyndon Johnson carried out his policies? or. As Jim Garrison suggests in his book, uh, was his death motivated by his winding down of the Cold War? Was he a threat to the, uh, a significant threat to the American establishment? Was he changing things with Khrushchev, with Russia, with Cuba, with Vietnam? With and uh, was his death really a political murder? What do you think? Well, you know what I think. You've, uh, presumably you've seen the movie, and the movie says quite clearly that you just, you his death was a coup d'etat. You, you say, you said at the start of the answer that if 20% of the book was correct, which made me wonder whether you were doubting it yourself. Well, let me say this, that I ultimately don't know. I don't know, and I, I've never described the movie as the truth. The movie I've described is really as a hypothesis. It, it is based on some facts. I go as far as I can with the facts that we have. Beyond that, I'm into the area of speculation. I've described the movie in, in, in maybe hyperbolic terms, is a counter myth to the myth of the Warren Commission. Bear in mind that I consider the Warren Commission is also based on facts plus speculation. Uh, the, the magic bullet theory is, is pure speculation, uh, as is many, many things in the Warren Commission. And a, lot of, uh, and a lot of the facts in the case are still not agreed upon because various eyewitnesses differ in their accounts of it. Uh, what do you say to charges that you are having your cake and eating it too, in that the film is presented as a feature film, not, not a documentary. But at the same time, you have said that you want it to change things, that the American public have been lied to, and you, you want the movie to be a step in the direction of correcting the lie. Where, where do you... I mean, people are then saying you're wanting to both make a feature. Well, I, I, a yeah, but I, I, no, I never set out to make a documentary. I couldn't. If I had done a documentary, and there have been several that are done that are very good, I would have stopped at the, at, with the facts, and I would have said, I can't go beyond this point. And I would have had a fairly dry and cerebral attack on the Warren Commission based on fact per fact. I wanted to prevent, present a, a sort of a, an overarching paradigm, a, a counter myth. I, 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 there's no b question that I, it is a full out attack on the Warren Commission because I don't believe it. And I think it was a, a lie. I think it was a lie put over on the American public that Oswald did it alone. The more I've read, the more I've researched, the more people I've talked to, the more I believe this. So, uh, 
you can question my tactics, but uh, you know, when we've had 28 years of, of, of bullshit from the, from the government and from the media. And when you're attacking the 28 years of bullshit, you better come at it with you know, a pretty fierce attack of your own if you're going to get people's attention. If you're going to make them sit up and say, you can't come at this half-heartedly. You've really got to, let me liken it to a bit like being a VC in enemy territory, Viet Cong. I mean, uh, I'm fighting an enemy that has been entrenched and established and has heavy artillery on its side. So uh, my, you know, I, have to, I have to use surprise. I have to use, uh, in, some, in some cases, the tactics of a guerrilla uh, to, make a, uh, to make an impression. When you talk about those guerrilla tactics, one of them surely must be that the use of news footage and re recreating, yeah. and, and that it is confusing. For a viewer who wasn't around at the time, it's very easy to think some of the scenes are actually old news footage being shown again. Did you, did you intend that? Well, I wanted to put the viewer, I mean, it not being a documentary, you are not detached from this movie, and uh, there's no question that I'm here and the movie is there. I went beyond that. I wanted to get into the movie. I want to put you into the skin of events. I want you to be in Dealey Plaza in 1963. I want you to, to be in the, in the mood, the atmosphere. I want you to smell it, hear it, feel it. I want you to be in the autopsy room with Kennedy. Do you remember that old TV program, You Are There? I want to put people into it so that they can understand or at least have a sense of what happened or what may have happened. And uh, I guess you can criticize me for that, but. I, I mean, apart from putting a prescription drug label on every scene at the bottom of the, and saying this is conjecture and this is fact, uh, which would have been a distancing effect, I, I just don't know how else to have done it. Why does it matter to you so much? Why does it matter to me so much? Because I suppose fundamentally, beyond it being a, a repugnant crime, I, I suppose it goes to the heart of what democracy is. It, it, at the end of the day, it posits the question is, do we really have a democracy in our country? Is government accountable to, to, to the people? Uh, is it really a covert, a shadow government that runs America? Uh, not only did they possibly kill Kennedy, but they killed Robert Kennedy, they killed Martin Luther King, they prosecuted a war in Vietnam in which, in which they lied to the people and never told them what was going on. We, then we have, we have a chief executive who, in liaison with the CIA, uh, conspired to bomb uh, a neutral country, uh, Laos and Cambodia, without telling the American people. Without uh, that, that's a conspiracy. We have a chief executive who sat at the heart of a criminal conspiracy in our country, and uh, as you know, escaped uh, impeachment by resigning one step ahead. We had a conspir another conspiracy in our country to sell arms to uh, an enemy country uh, in the casual hope of their releasing some hostages. Another conspiracy to provide uh, weapons and cash to uh, uh, Nicaraguan Contras against the laws of the United States. Another possible conspiracy uh, to, to, to uh, uh, stall the release of hostages in, in, in Iran in order to get another president elected. We've had five or six conspiracies. These are all major allegations, major accusations on mm -hmm. your part. Why? Well, no, these are facts. On uh, five of these six conspiracies are facts. Why make movies? Why not make documentaries? Because obviously you, you do care about the truth. Well, because we don't have the facts on the Kennedy killing. All the facts are not in. And part of the reason is because the, the damn government never gave the facts to the people. When the Warren Commission was formed, and I implied that it was a cover-up, the CIA and the FBI gave what they wanted to to the Warren Commission, and they had a hell of a lot of more uh, documentation. They had 300,000 pages on Oswald. They never gave anything to the, to, uh, to the Warren Commission of any significance. Uh, Alan Dulles, who Jack Kennedy had fired as the head of the CIA, and Jack Kennedy vowed, as you know, to splinter the CIA into 10,000 pieces, they appointed Alan Dulles uh, to investigate John Kennedy's death. That's like asking the, uh, the, the fox to investigate the chicken coop. It isn't fair. So you cannot talk to me about it as if there is any set or agreed upon f a body of facts in the, in the Kennedy killing. It is a mess, this case. It is a mess. And it is the right, in fact, it may well be the obligation of any artist to go back into this thing and reinterpret it. Because I don't think the history was written correctly. You've been pretty forceful in your condemnation of the media at the time and since. Do you think that's why they have now turned around and attacked the film? No. No. 
uh, my condemnation was, is a small part of it. The media basically blew the story in 1963. I'm talking about the American media. They, they accepted the cover story, which was put out on Friday afternoon, uh, that Oswald did it alone. Uh, and I showed that in the movie with Donald Sullivan. They had the, uh, the cover story right in place. Uh, it's a, it's, it was uh, the technique of black operations, the technique of covert operations. They had a studio biography of, of Oswald that was available on all the wires. You could have been in New Zealand, you could have been in Egypt, you could have been in, in England. Uh, South Africa. You got the same story on Friday afternoon. This was four or five hours before Oswald was charged with the killing of the president, but it was already starting to point to Oswald. And when Oswald was killed on Sunday by Jack Ruby, the New York Times headline said, President's assassin is shot. It didn't say, President's alleged assassin is shot, which is what it should have said. Oswald never had representation, and the facts about Oswald were, were buried for the American public. We now know that the CIA had a heavy, uh, increasingly thick 201 file on Oswald from 1960 on. But when Richard Helms testified to the commission, uh, he, he, he denied that the CIA had any interest at all in, in Lee Harvey Oswald. Why do you think the media have been so um, aggressive towards you and the film? Because, number one, it's their territory. They blew the story in 1963. They never asked. The American uh, press never asked why. What, what is a possible motive for his death? They never, when Indira Gandhi gets blown up and uh, killed in India, the press asks him, who are the, what are the opposing political forces? The American press never asked that question. They went right away with the Oswald did it alone. Oswald as communist, although we know that Oswald liked Jack Kennedy, in fact adored him, they accepted that Oswald was a communist. Jim Garrison brought out in New Orleans that, uh, that Oswald as a communist was hanging out with anti-communists. The same thing in Dallas. Do you feel the, I suppose what I'm driving at is, do you, do you feel that the uh, media campaign against you has been orchestrated anyway? I mean, do you, do you feel could, part of a conspiracy theory? It could be. I mean, uh, you know, it's one, th look, uh, they've, they've called me everything from a paranoid to a lunatic and everything, so this is ridiculous, but uh, I've always said that there are two conspiracies. There was a small conspiracy, it could involve five to ten people, maybe eleven, twelve, to kill the president. There is a second conspiracy here to cover it up. Now, because I said that doesn't mean that the New York Times conspired to kill Robert, uh, John Kennedy. But something happened. Something happened. There was a, an embarrassment, let's say. Maybe Lyndon Johnson uh, said to Earl Warren when he forced him under the commission, he said, something, uh, this is serious, the, possibly Castro did it. There could be a war here involving the loss of 40 million lives. He used that word, 40 million lives, to, to persuade Earl Warren to take this job. There seemed to be this sort of strange and embarrassing desire to cover it up quickly, not to have a major international embarrassment, to, to pin the thing on Oswald and to move on with our lives. And of course, our moving on with our lives implied going to Vietnam. And uh, what's been lost in all this is that Kennedy has been sort of summarily dismissed as a Cold War president whose policies in Vietnam were quickly carried out by Lyndon Johnson. This is not the case. Uh, Arthur Schlesinger Jr. has written about this, and there's a new book uh, coming out, which is a fascinating, groundbreaking work by John Newman that goes in depth into documented details about John Kennedy's plans to withdraw from Vietnam in 1965. Isn't there a problem, though, in blaming Vietnam on the roots of it, on the assassination of Kennedy, that you I'm, let other people off the hook? No, no, of course. I am, that is all, also I've been misrepresented on it. I, I point to the motive as being the winding down of the Cold War on a much larger scale. I'm saying what the movie says is that Kennedy was reaching a sort of a form of early detente with Khrushchev, 25 years ahead of Gorbachev. Uh, that, that there's plenty of evidence of this, not only the American University speech, but the deals that he made with, with Khrushchev in 1962 over the Cuban Missile Crisis, the, the signing of the Nuclear Peace Treaty, which was a groundbreaking thing at that time the installation of the hotline, the backdoor negotiation with Castro, and a very strict, very strict, no combat troop policy by President Kennedy, not only in Vietnam, but in Cuba, and in Laos, and several times in Vietnam, in 1961, 62, and 63. Fiona, just to say, there's only two and a half minutes left, so um, your, your key questions, the ones that we've all right. Okay. Um, I'm key sorry. questions. I thought key we had the key questions. Key <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's difficult, isn't it? Well, I think one of the, one of the things that I 
would like to ask you, in the film you say that there's a scene which involves um, most of the DAs and they say that what the one who is alleged to, to uh, betray Garrison stands up and says, for God's sake, we couldn't ha uh, keep a conspiracy, we couldn't organise a conspiracy, we couldn't keep a secret amongst ourselves, and yet your film set suggests that there's a huge range of organisations. Yeah, well I, I dealt with that, but I'll go back to it. Also, okay. about uh, all this position as a radical yeah, I'm, I was going to do that too. I'm sorry, it's difficult in two and a half minutes, isn't it? <laughs> I'm talking fast. I know, that's right. We'll just, just we'll, uh, try and ignore them. Um, this, the allegation is that the, within the film is that the conspiracy is enormous. It's an inverted pyramid, effectively. Doesn't the fact that it is that make it less likely? I mean, it's so huge that people would have well, leaked. Well, uh, there again, the film has been misrepresented because if you look at the film closely, when, when the Donald Sullivan character is talking to uh, Costner, he says, it's in the air, there's no face on it. Nothing's on paper, everyone has a plausible deniability. And then he, we cut to a shot of one man picking up a telephone, the implication being that it, one high-level official, be it an Alan Dulles, let's say, just for the sake of, uh, makes one call to a middle-level official. The middle-level official is the guy who picks up the phone. He's told, we're going, we're going in the south, we're going in the fall. That person puts into play the mechanics, the hitmen, who do the job. It's a cellular organization. In other words, I, if I'm a, I'm a shooter, I don't even know who hired me. I don't even know your name. I may not even know the name of the other shooter. It is done in a, sort of like a terrorist organization in Beirut in, or in Algiers, very cellular. Ultimately, in the conspiracy to kill the president, it could involve as little as six or seven men, eight men, nine men, who don't even know their names because nothing is on paper. Nothing can be proved. Exactly. The cover-up, however, is a whole other story which involves, I think, a larger group of people, but that does not need to say that those people involved in the cover-up knew that Kennedy had been killed by a conspiracy. Maybe they sense it, but they don't really know the facts. They're so, therefore, a sort of a I call it a silent ascent. Uh, the, uh, for example, the FBI is mentioned in the film, but only in terms of the cover-up. But my critics have always used that and say, well, Stone throws in everything. The kitchen sink, too. He has the FBI is in on the killing. Uh, Lyndon Johnson is in on the killing. No, the film only said that Lyndon Johnson was in on a cover-up, that he knew something had happened and he was trying to cover it up. It's said of this film, Oliver Stone is um, an is an obsessional, uh, obsessional with the 60s particularly, but an obsessional filmmaker. Others say Oliver Stone is one of the great radical filmmakers, America's radical filmmakers. Now, where do you think you lie, or is it a bit of both? Um, um. Well, uh, certainly when I started, I didn't make any connection to Vietnam. It was only through my, my talks with uh, Fletcher Prouty, Colonel Fletcher Prouty, who, play, who is the ex-character is based on, is that I began to understand what the uh, National Security Action Memos 263 and 273 really meant. So all that information came to me after I was involved. Uh, therefore, Vietnam was hardly my motive. Uh, one can argue that, you know, the chicken or the egg. Uh, because I was in Vietnam, therefore I'm only concerned about Kennedy and uh, Vietnam. But that's not true. I think I was put on Earth, I was born in those years. And my, in a strange way, my life parallels these events. And I think any artist, uh, whether it's Zola in France or Dickens in England, I mean, they write about the time, they reflect the time they move through. So thank God that I was born in interesting times. There's an old Chinese curse, you know, may you live in interesting times. I think I just reflect those times. And a radical within that. Well, radical because, you know, we're living in the Orwell age. He, he's an Eng your English uh, writer is, was much more acute than people give him credit for. Uh, I remember when 1984 rolled around, Time magazine had a cover and they sort of chuckled and said, well, you see, 1984 came and went and it never happened. But it did happen. And it happened in a much more subtle way than even Orwell could have predicted. It happened in a way where the media did take over, but they gave you so much trivialization and so much marginalization uh, that they could depoliticize any issue by trivializing it. And it worked. And in fact, Kennedy has been trivialized by all this Kennedy bashing, the womanizing, uh, this, that. And it doesn't matter how many women he went with. What matters is what he was trying to do, and that's been forgotten.
Thank you.